did not have a weekly wrap-up last week. We did film a weekly wrap-up, but because of everything that's been going on in our lives and the fact that our rhythms are all messed up and actually kind of quite opposite at the moment, we weren't able to get together in a way that were, was helpful and able to get it out to you, but we are getting it out to you this week retroactively. So we're going to have a two-week weekly wrap-up. I'm going to throw it back to past Michaela, and then we'll come back to, to present where then we'll talk about things that would be in the future but are in the timelines. You know how it works. We're going to be doing two weeks, but first let's throw back to past Michaela and Gretchen and they'll tell you about last week. Hey guys, and welcome to another weekly wrap-up. You might note that this is not my normal background and that's because I moved this week. You will also note as you watch this video that my content has been super shifty because of that fact, but Gretchen had some stuff and I had some stuff, so we're here to talk about it. So, on Monday, I had a really special video for you guys, which was Why There Is No Love Triangle in A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. And the book is right behind me, I guess I could have shown it to you, but I did a spoiler-free review of this book last Friday, and I said, eh, but there's something kind of spoilery that I want to talk about. And that is the video I made on Monday, which is Why There's No Love Triangle in that book, even though I've seen some reviews of people saying that there's a love triangle in that book. So talking about why A Court of Mist and Fury is so important to me and how Sarah actually managed to make the Beauty and the Beast storyline work for a strong female character. So if you're interested in that at all, please do check that out and talk to me about it because it's important to me and I want to hear everybody's thoughts. On Tuesday, we both had individual posts and my ruler of book tags was very, very short because I was really sick when I made that video. I'm still sick now, but I'm actually talking and conversing. So it is a really cool tag, but I am sick in that video. So, you know, you can be amused by how much I look like I look like I've been hit in the face by a truck. On Wednesday, and I did a review of The Vision, Volume 1, which I believe comes out in June, but I read the single issue comics. I borrowed them from my boss's son, but I did read them all. I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did. I haven't been super interested in superhero stories at this time in my life, but this is more the story of a family who's just trying to fit in in super, suburban DC, I think. Uh, they just happen to be cybernetic robots. You know, uh, they got normal family problems, it, but, you know, they're also robots. And if you want to hear more about that before it comes out and whether you should pick it up, definitely go check out that post. On Wednesday, surprise, surprise, my post was a Worth It Wednesday with Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. If you've been with this channel for any length of time, you know that that's a big deal for me. I had uh, in Bibliomancy do that episode on Queen of the Tearling back in February, and I also made a 30 Seconds to Disagree before that with Michaela telling her why she should read the book. Um, and then it really, I guess it really didn't matter if I convinced her because I made her read it anyways. But anyway, I think that book is really worth it. And you can check out that text post for a little bit more of a synthesized reason as to why if you don't want to watch the hour-long video that the book club made or watch the really short video that Michaela and I made. Because I didn't get in and do a Monday musing, I did a... Thursday musing where I talked about moving and what it was like for me and sort of apologized for the late content, which probably this will be as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's taken up my life and I talked about why I've chosen to move and how fortunate I am to have a space that I can call my own now and I will be, uh, you know, maybe talking about that a little bit more in the future, but if you would like to hear more about that, then definitely go check out that post. On Friday, I had another video review, which is amazing for me. I haven't been doing many of these. Like, I haven't been reviewing at all, let's be honest. But I finally got around to reviewing Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. And guys, I liked this book a lot more than I planned to. Lady Midnight is about two young shadow hunters who become joined as partners in a kind of parabody ritual, but a rule of parabody is that you cannot fall in love, and of course they fall in love, and I thought that was going to be the major plotline of this book, and I was like, oh god, that's going to be terrible, why, Cassandra, why? Actually, the emotional weight of this book with everything else involved was 
amazing, and I'm so glad that I read it. And so for more on that, check out my video review. On Friday, associated with all of that moving, I talked about a problem that maybe a lot of people can relate to in the uh, fact that I question whether I'm a book hoarder or not. Um, I have done a purge of my books this year at the very beginning of the year, and that's the first time I've ever gotten rid of books. My entire life I have collected them and kept them and don't want to get rid of them, and I sort of discuss the thought process around that and why I have so many, because I have to move them all, and they are heavy. Books are heavy, and I have a lot of them, so yeah, I talked about that and maybe why that is, and I asked if other people had that feeling too, where they feel like they uh, need to hold on to books, even if they didn't like them, because they're their book. I don't know. Um, so yeah, definitely go read that post as well. I only read two books this week, but they were two huge ones, so I'm calling this a pretty successful reading week anyways, uh, even though last week I did tell you that I was mostly done with Lady Midnight at last week's wrap up, but I don't care, I look impressive. So if you didn't guess, the two books that I read this week were Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare and The Mirror King by Jodie Meadows. At the end of last year, I reviewed The Orphan Queen, which is the first book in the series, and it was a really conflicted text review that I did, so I was really excited to get my hands on this and see how the second book in the duology made me feel. This is not my year for duologies. I think the rule here is that I should just never read duologies, because I was really disappointed by the end to the Seraphina duology, I was disappointed by The Rose and the Dagger. This wasn't disappointing? But it was just, it was a thing. So I'm going to get back to y'all on that when I do my review of this coming soon. So you can look forward to that. When it comes to the books that I read this week, there is one singular book, and that is Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. And I read that for Book Club, which is happening next week, actually Monday next week, which depending on when this video gets out, might be very soon. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that book club episode is going to be interesting, I think, because I have a feeling that um, that book is more tuned towards me than the other people in our book club, and I'm actually, I really liked it for that reason, but, you know, you'll have to see that video to hear my full thoughts on that. That's all we have for you this week. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for hanging with us while we all go through moving back home and moving out of home, you know, if you're Michaela, and as we muddle along trying to make sure that we are getting you guys all of the content that you deserve, because you do deserve it, and we do like making it. So bear with us. Life's crazy, but we are here, and we will be back. Now, a very great transition into what's happening this week. And by that I mean what happened this Everything's in the past! On Monday, of the most recent Mondays, I had my May wrap-up. It was a kind of in advance of the May deadline, but A, that's where it fell. So I talked about my rebound in May being a better reading month than last time. I got rid of five Pop Sugar challenges and read eight books, so good job me very proud, and there was a lot of really good stuff that I read in May, so, ah, uh, May, you were kind to me. I also put at the end of that a life wrap-up, so if you're wondering what the hell is going on, that's a good place to start. On Tuesday, we posted the video on our blogs for the Bibliomancy for Beginners season opener. Uh, we did do that live stream Monday night, but it came out on the blogs on Tuesday, so we're counting it as our Tuesday post, or Betwixt the Books post is actually a Bibliomancy for Beginners post. We talked about The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby, which was my pick. It won the Pulitzer Prize. It's a, got super great writing, but, <coughs> sorry, but you definitely need to go watch that hour-long discussion to hear a whole bunch of talk about personal preference and um, small town stories in young adult literature and magical realism as a genre slash subgenre slash thing in general. All of these things came up in that discussion. It's a good one. Go watch that video. On Wednesday, I had a Worth It Wednesday post on Tamora Pierce's The Circle of Magic series, which is actually literally, is, is right there. Is right there. 
Um, I wanted to feature that series because I think that it's less well known than all her Turtal books, but should not be because it deals with a lot of important stuff. And when I redid my bookshelf, I was reading portions of those books and just thinking, wow, these books are really great. So I talk about why that whole series, all eight, nine, eleven books in that series are really, really great. So read a very, very concise Worth It Wednesday from me encompassing 11 books. <laughs> On Wednesday, not surprisingly, I had my May wrap-up. <coughs> Wednesday is usually comic book day, but I hadn't read any comics that week, so I talked about all of the books I read in May. Unlike Gretchen, my May was kind of a sucky May. I think I read six things in total, and four of those things were graphic novels, so only two real books that are novels. The rest were comics or graphic novels, and one of those I might have finished months earlier, but I just realized because I was reading it in the comic form that I had finished it. Eh. Um, I didn't do any pop sugar challenges, so it was slower for me. To be fair, I was getting in the rhythm of my new job, I was moving, there's all of these things that were going on in my life that sort of took away from my free time and it was less great, not exactly what I wanted. However, going into June, I have my weekends free, so even if I'm moving, I should have time to read, and because I'm in my own house by myself, I'll have all the time, it won't be interrupted, it won't be doing other things, and oh my god, it'll be great. There was nothing on Thursday, in case you were curious. You did not miss anything, there was just nothing. Um, but on Friday, I had the really trippy experience of having a review that I filmed back in February come out, so that was super weird. It was my old haircut, it was my dorm room with, like, all the stuff not on my whiteboards. It was really odd, but that was my ARC review of The Vanishing Throne by Elizabeth May, and I have been talking about that book for ever since it came out and I am so happy to finally be able to share that review with you guys because I am so excited in that video and I'd forgotten how much so watching it for me was hilarious. So you should definitely check that out as well because if you did or did not like the first book in that series which is The Falconer, The Vanishing Throne is a hundred times better and I was in love. So definitely check that out. It's just cool all around. My Friday post was a recommendation post where I talked about every single summer book that I think you should read that will be coming out this summer that I have read in the past. <coughs> all of these things. I work in a library now, so I get to hear all sorts of things about what's going to be popular, what's going to be a bestseller, what's coming out. Part of what I do is to look for those so that our patrons have it. Um, and so I figured I would share my knowledge with you give you some of the books that you might want to be picking up this summer, and give you some oldies but goodies, in my opinion. Uh, so definitely go check out that post if you're looking for some good summer reads, beach reads, vacation reads, etc. Welcome to the portion of the video where we talk about what we read this week. And I read two books this week, and both of them were ebooks, so I don't have either of them, but the first one, you might guess, was Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. I finished that way at the beginning of this week and probably could have counted it in my last wrap-up, but I didn't, so I'm counting it in this one, which is now technically the same wrap-up, so whatever. Um, but anyways, that was for our Bibliomancy for Beginners opener, and I had so many thoughts on that book. Um, that episode, like Michaela said, is really, really good, and you should definitely watch it, because I love it when we get feisty. Those are the best. <laughs> and also laugh hysterically about, you know, moose. So... I also read this week Rusuku by David Kudler. This is an arc that I have for review, and it will be coming out on the blog next uh, Friday. Yes, next Friday. <laughs> I also was not a huge fan of that one. The Bone Gap got two stars from me, and Rasuko got two and a half. So it has not been a good reading week for me, but that means that some very interesting reviews will be coming your way, and you can look forward to that. Rasuku is a young adult pseudo-historical novel set in Japan. It's all about a girl who thinks she's training to be a shrine maiden, but is in fact training to be a female samurai warrior, um, but just fails, mostly. So yeah, not great. But look forward to that next week! I read stuff, I just didn't finish anything. I will have to finish something for Monday, because 
the book actually comes out on Tuesday, and I have started it, and I'm a way into it, and I like it, but uh, to hear my thoughts on that, you'll have to wait a little bit. And I've had Joe Hill's The Fireman since it came out, and have not picked it up for various reasons, and I just want to sit and read it, but I can't. I have too many things, I just want to read the book. <laughs> so, I don't have anything to talk about. That's what happens. Well, guys, this has been a wild, timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly ride, and we hope that you've mildly enjoyed it. I'm sure that this looks a lot longer than our usual wrap-ups, but we promise we will figure this out. It'll be great, you know, all of the moving either into your own houses if you're Michaela or back home if you're me and preparing to, you know, leave for a different country if you're me and getting back into jobs if you're the both of us. It's just been insane. And we thank you for putting up with us while we go on this wild ride. Uh, like we said, those book club episodes at the very least will be coming out like clockwork because we're really excited about them and also we really love making videos that we don't have to edit. Editing is hard, in case you didn't know. Um, yeah. So, thanks again guys and hopefully this week we'll be reading and actually editing and it's going to be great. So, we will see you next week. Bye!